Congresswoman, she has it requires no introduction, but for those of you who are not aware, she was elected in 1998 to represent the 9th District of Illinois. Um, she told me immediately prior to this panel that she likes to think of herself as much as possible as a leader of the resistance. <laughs> I think we face a real potential for a constitutional crisis from uh, President Trump's Muslim ban, his attack on the judiciary, uh, violations of the emoluments clause, his meddling in the Russian investigation. These are all deeply, deeply troubling, and I could certainly go on. And actually, I will. Uh, so, uh, talking about uh, about immigration, our, our courts are, have already been so important. I want to thank the, the lawyers and the judiciary um, to put in place important safeguards against President Trump's efforts to violate our country's core values. When the president signed the the Muslim ban, I, like many others, went out to the airport. But I saw just this huge number of lawyers that were rushing to O'Hare, ready to help however they could. It was so impressive. Any of you here out of the airport that night? It was, it was amazing. The president withdrew the first uh, Muslim ban after it was stayed by the Ninth Circuit. And last week, the Fourth Circuit affirmed the freeze on President Trump's second Muslim ban. The Fourth Circuit noted in its decision that national security, quote, is not the true reason, unquote, for this ban. Instead, it was based on, in a desire, in violation of our Constitution, to create a religious test for entry into our country. President Trump also attempted to illegally withhold funds for sanctuary cities, like the city of Chicago, to force compliance with the inhumane and cruel deportation priorities. Again, the, the court stepped in. Judge William o, uh, H. Horak in the Northern District of California issued an injunction against the enforcement of this executive order. However, the stain on our country's reputation and ongoing deportation efforts remain. Uh, I, I wanted to talk about uh, the attacks on, on the judges. President Trump's disregard, and I really think seeming ignorance of our Constitution and political norms is very disturbing. President Trump has repeatedly attacked the judiciary, complaining about uh, rulings against him and targeting specific judges in Twitter tantrums. He dismissed U.S. District Judge James Robart, who referred a challenge to the Muslim ban. Uh, he called him a, uh, a so-called uh, judge who wrote a ridiculous, he said, ridiculous decision. And Donald Trump is certainly not the first president to be frustrated by other, the other branches of government. But at the end of the day, the president must be respectful of the separation of powers in our system of government. That assumes he knows what the separation of powers really is. Um, Amalians, who knew that that would almost become household work? Um, President uh, Trump's assault on our Constitution and political norms actually began the moment he raised his hand and took that oath of, of office of violation of the Amalians clause. Um, he was violating the Constitution, the American people's trust of his unprecedented conflicts of interest. And I don't have to explain the emoluments clause to, uh, to all of you, but it is interesting that the president or any elected official can, in fact, accept emoluments, gifts, but only with the permission of the Congress. He has never come to the Congress to ask for our permission for anything. And you may be seeing further action based on, on that violation. Unlike presidents before him, President Trump refused to fully separate himself his family, from his business dealings, putting him in violation of the Emoluments Clause. Citizens for Responsible and ethic, uh, Ethics in Washington crew, many of you, you know what they've been doing, already filed a lawsuit uh, for his failure to abide by the Emoluments Clause, and you might expect uh, that there will be further lawsuits in the future. Then there's Russia and the unfolding drama. I really think that the reason... Has House of Cards come on yet? Yeah. Oh, it did. Okay. I thought they kept postponing it because this drama certainly takes uh, precedence. It's like a, 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 you know, 
could be a Netflix story. Unfortunately, it isn't a Netflix story. It's, re it's, uh, it's reality. Um, his flagrant attempts to disrupt the Justice Department, its investigation into possible Russian collusion with the Trump campaign administration, so have already called it an obstruction of justice. Um, he pressured FBI Director James Comey to shut down his investigation into Russian interference, and when Comey refused to do that, of course, he was fired. I think there would be some point of justice um, uh, if uh, James Comey brought down Donald Trump after, I think, bringing down, helping to bring down Hillary Clinton. Um, and of course, this comes after he fired two other individuals who are investi being investigated, um, uh, who are doing the investigation, Sally Yates and U.S. Attorney Preet uh, uh, Bahara. Uh, President Trump also asked uh, Daniel Coates, Director of National Intelligence, and Mike Rogers, Director of National Security Agency, to publicly deny the existence of any evidence of collusion with Russia during the 2016 election. Both refused to do so. I spent eight years on the Intelligence Committee. This is so, uh, not just unusual and unprecedented, it's so wrong. Um, as of now, Paul Manafort, Jared Kushner, Michael Cohn, Michael Flynn are all under investigation. Who knows the next names to come? There has been a, system, a systematic effort by Donald Trump and his associates to willfully mislead the American people, undermine the Justice Department and intelligence communities, and make a mockery of the checks and balances put into the Constitution. With every passing week, it seems like another thread comes loose as this administration starts to unravel. That's what I think we are witnessing right now, is the unraveling. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, uh, has, I think that he says Rosenstein, has now appointed a special counsel. That's a good thing. I know former uh, FBI Director Robert Mueller. From my time on the uh, Intelligence Committee, I think that uh, my sense is that he will conduct a fair investigation. But I continue to push, and many of us in Congress, for an independent commission to look at the Russian election hacking so that we have not only a uh, council looking at whether crimes were committed, but also a broader examination of what happened, and also recommendations on how to um, address that in the future. Um, let, let me just uh, give you the, the headlines of other things that you may want to, to, to talk about. Um, we, we know that the president has set up a commission now to look at voter fraud, which we also know is essentially non-existent. Um, and we are seeing uh, states passing all kinds of voter suppression laws. Um, that is a, a serious issue. We also see with Attorney General Jeff Sessions really rolling back of what has been almost a consensus that we act on uh, criminal justice reform in this country. It felt like we were actually close to getting some things done. And now um, we see with Sessions and the lead uh, kind of a, a lock them up, throw a key attitude. And we've seen it in the Congress, too. In the House of Representatives, a couple of bills passed just last week that I found Extremely, extremely tr troubling. Um, this was uh, on our police uh, week that the, the uh, uh, Republicans established. And so uh, a bill passed that the murder of uh, a police officer, the uh, attempted murder, and the tracking <coughs> of a police officer, that those crimes could be eligible for the death penalty. And, the, and certainly uh, additions of mandatory minimum sentences. What, what was really troubling to me that 48 Democrats supported that. The, it seems like the energy is going the other way. There was also a bill that passed that said that uh, probation officers without a warrant could arrest uh, parolees. Um, and, and so we're, in, in my view, going in absolutely the wrong, the wrong direction. But let me just say that uh, in response to the challenges we face by Democratic <laughs> colleagues and I started a democracy reform task force. I'm the, I'm the vice chair of that. 
Um, but the, the effort to protect our democracy extends far beyond the Congress. I want to thank all the, the, the legal teams who have been hard at work in defending our democracy at so many different levels. Uh, lawyers have stepped up like they never have before and need to continue to step up. And, and when there's been a violation, we need to, uh, as the ACLU had on their big brochure after the election, we'll see you in court. Um, so we want to do our part in the legislature. I do my part trying to organize outside the Congress. I think what's happening outside is actually more important today in shaping policy than what is happening in, on the inside. So I encourage all of you to become activists, to uh, use whatever uh, legal training you have to help us to resist the challenges we see to our democracy. Thank you so much.